Congratulations on the book. Uh, some really you. incredible stories here. What inspired you to write this, and why 13 soldiers? Well, 13 is the major conflicts that uh, we've been in. Not all the conflicts, but the major ones. And, uh, well, we wanted to honor the men and women who served, but also a lesson to younger men and women also to inspire them as well, and mm -hmm. also to honor them. There was uh, some wonderful people that maybe a lot of people don't know about, like Charles Black, who was an African-American who served on board ship, was in a Brit terrible British prison, and uh, was really a brave guy, and then years later was uh, badly beaten in a race riot in Philadelphia. That uh, People like uh, one of my dear friends named Leo Thorsness, who mm -hmm. performed incredible aviation exploits against surface-to-air missiles, AAA, and, uh, and MiGs that attacked him uh, during the Vietnam uh, conflict as well. And so it's kind of a cross-section, uh, uh, women as well as African Americans. That's right, you have two women that you yeah. profile. Native American uh, named Chief Mitchell Red Cloud, who fought, fought with uh, Mark Salter's father in Korea. A credible acts of heroism, but they were ordinary people, and some were you know, well, some like uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes, yeah, not some, such an say, ordinary guy. Boston Brahmin to people like Charles Martin, who uh, who came from the humblest beginnings, and so it it means that the thing that that binds them all together is that they are extraordinary people, ordinary people who did extraordinary things. Really incredible. Uh, and we incredible honor them tomorrow. Um, any any story in particular, any soldier that you felt like you identified with? Well, of course, Leo Thorson because I was an aviator, and this is about his incredible aviation skills. But uh, also, um, I, I, I identified a lot with Mark Salter's father because... And Mark you know, is, of course, your, your yeah, co-writer on the yeah, book. Who was in Korea. The Korean War was kind of our forgotten war, and the Chinese came down. And, and this Mitchell Red Cloud, who was a Native American, literally... He was wounded and asked Mark's father to tie him to a tree so he could keep firing at the Chinese while the rest of them escaped. That, you know, and this was a Native American from the what we used to call the Winnebago tribe, they're now called the Bohunks, but the, that just an, a marvelous story of people in a freezing cold with an enemy that was overwhelming them, and yet they sacrificed themselves to save their comrades. That's you know, that's yeah. that's what the bravest of America is all about. And when you're in those situations, and, and you certainly have been through uh, a whole lot, when you're in those situations, is it as though something else takes over, that there's bravery perhaps that you never knew you had? You know, I think part of it is, and this one common thread, uh, both men and women and others who fought, is love of your comrades and the feeling that you have of of, of ready to fight and die for them. Uh, at the end, there's a brave young man who's a SEAL in Iraq, and uh, a grenade uh, is thrown, and he could have escaped, but he threw himself on that grenade to save the lives of his fellow SEAL team members. Um, that That's uh, the, only this love of one another under the most... Uh, tensest, most difficult, dangerous situations knits the, those people together to, the, to that degree. And um, that's why we are the country we are. When so. you think about the challenges that veterans face uh, when they come back home, uh, a lot of these are pretty significant, not just in terms of uh, maybe getting a job, and we've seen higher unemployment rates uh, for recent vets, um, than the rest of the population, a lot of economic pressures, of course. Uh, and then, of course, we've got everything that has uh, unfolded there at the VA. Um, there's now a, an effort to, to rebuild, and Veterans Affairs Secretary Robert McDonnell has announced this massive restructuring today, in fact, calling it the largest in the department's history. And uh, this whole reorganization is aiming to make it easier for veterans to get access to care and to navigate the websites. Do you think it will work? Do you think that more is needed? How do we make sure that we're doing all we can for the people that serve this country. I think we're making a step forward, but I also think there's systemic, the Inspector General of the VA has issued reports saying there's systemic fundamental problems that still have to be addressed. Now, I think the legislation we passed and these measures, I hope, will improve the situation, but 
You know, our office handles cases, people who come to us who can't get help from the federal government. We have more veterans cases than all the others mm -hmm. combined. So there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. But at least we're on the right road. But when 50 veterans from Phoenix VA Hospital die because they're on a, quote, waiting list, um, that's, that's not acceptable, obviously.